digitalizing financing of the agricultural sector offers one of the plausible options to overcome some of the adverse effects of the pandemic on access to finance for investment in the sector. Digitalization is critical in farmer profiling as well as other aspects like data aggregation, developing a credible information system along the agricultural value chains, as well as documenting land inventories. Also, digitalization supports risk assessment and overall credit scoring of would be clients. Agricultural and business skill adoption, as well as supporting the identification of genuine inputs, which has been a problem across the agricultural sector for some time. Digitalization also supports price optimization, uh, as well as the marketing and improving of record keeping, and it can aid in other aspects like financial, uh, speeding up the financial literacy, and more generally speeding up the lending processes while reducing overall transaction costs and for financial services. This month comes at a time when the world is grappling with the strategies that will mitigate the adverse effects of the COVID-19 pandemic, including its impact on access to finance. Amidst the disruption brought on by this pandemic, <coughs> digitalization has emerged the winner. The theme was chosen to reflect the potential and the prospects for digitalization to spur agricultural finance. The yearbook discusses the intervention and the advances made in policy, strategy, innovation, research, as well as the financing of the value chain and agricultural investments. It highlights the challenges that policymakers, implementers, participants in the patent value chains must address to extend the national agricultural finance franchise. Um, as you will see, the book has four main subfields policy and strategy, innovations and research, financing of agricultural uh, value chains, and financing for agricultural investments. The sub-themes emphasize the urgent need to digitalize financial service delivery in Uganda. It further highlights uh, several issues that continue to constrain access and usage of agricultural finance uh, that's available in Uganda. The yearbook points to the impact of government policy and strategy for agricultural sector. It also reveals that government interventions such as the Agricultural Credit uh, Facility, SEF, have been instrumental in boosting the flow of credit to the agricultural sector since its establishment in 2009. Nevertheless, a comprehensive evaluation and review of the scheme is necessary to inform its potential expansion and enhancement so that it can be extended beyond its current reach. In the past, the SCF focused only on large-scale farmers, processors, as well as guaranteeing green trading and marketing, but must consolidate the inroads into serving micro, small, and medium-scale enterprises for further financial inclusion and economic equity. Now, indeed, all stakeholders are called upon to reinvigorate the implementation of the National Financial Inclusion Strategy for the year 2017 to 2020 to deepen financial inclusion in the agricultural sector. No less than the most recent FinScope survey for 2018 revealed that Uganda has unresolved challenges in digitalizing financial services, which continue to hamper Uganda's progress in financial service outreach and inclusion. Deepening and broadening digital penetration for broad-based national connectivity will certainly go a long way in sparring on the digitalization of financial services. Now, we also note that the pandemic has forced on everyone the need to review and reform the strategies for supporting micro, small, and medium-sized enterprises due to the severe disruption uh, to supply and value chains, reduced demand, and lost incomes. It's therefore necessary to help farms to rebuild supply and value chains, 
find new markets and value to commodity and add value to commodities, overcome distress from pandemic induced indebtedness such as through loan reshaping among others. In the long term, government and stakeholders should support micro, small, medium enterprises to improve resilience to shocks through enhanced access to value chain information, digital uh, platforms, effective um, storage facilities, and a comprehensive range of financial intermediaries that bring the financially excluded and informally included agricultural micro, small, medium enterprises. Further, it will be necessary to rationalize the multiplicity in the legislative framework touching digital finance, financial services, transactions, and this includes the Data Protection and Privacy Act, the Electronic Sign Signatures Act, the Electronic Transaction Act, among others, so as to appropriately cover digital agribusiness. The draft national policy and strategies on agricultural finance need to smartly address the digital financial service needs for agriculture, covering agricultural, agricultural cycles, business skilling, and extension services. You will notice that the year will contain several agricultural financing models for various commodities such as rice, dairy farming, coffee, among others. The models have some standard features. It talks about the aggregation of producers for economies of scale. It also mentions about the financial linkages between the value chains, actors, and this includes input distributors, extension agents, agri-markets, information pro no, uh, providers, just to name a few. Harnessing the models that are contained in the yearbook for acceleration of access to financial services to agricultural, micro, small, medium enterprises will also require mechanisms for reducing risks that may arise from information asymmetries, moral hazard, and adverse selection. So the viable models should be scaled across the, uh, the country, supplemented by enactment of contract farming laws, elimination of this proportionate concession waivers, and investment in the collection of reliable agricultural data. Now, you also note that the yearbook presents interventions to improve the value chain development and investment climate within select areas of the agricultural sector. It's to the extent that extending the value chain beyond internal markets and linking them to regional and global value chains uh, will require a supportive legal framework that can attract intra African investments, ease trade, develop relevant agro industrialization policies to ensure enforcement mechanisms for commodity auctions, warehousing, and central trading platforms. Investment in innovation together with research and development for the promotion of high quality outputs become unavoidable for taking on external markets. So you will also note that the government of Uganda with all stakeholders must strengthen the schemes such as Uganda Agricultural Insurance Scheme, the Agricultural Credit Facility for blended finance and mobilization of medium and long-term capital for financing the agricultural sector. Now, as you are aware, the Bank of Uganda administers the Agricultural Credit Facility on behalf of the government. As the administrator, the bank supports medium and long-term financing to agricultural projects, agro-processing, grain trading, among others, at lower than market interest rates. Uh, currently, these are between 10 and 12 on average, compared to the 20s that you access from the commercial banks. Up to September this year, government has contributed 153.6 billion shillings, which together with the reforms, this is what is being paid back from this facility, amounting to nearly 142 billion, has supported cumulative lending of nearly 267 billion shillings out of the, uh, the facility. The majority of the loans have performed satisfactory funding a broad range of projects including on-farm activities, grain trade, cost harvest management, and agro-processing. About 56% of the funded projects belong to micro, small, medium, size enterprises, which are the engine of growth. Now, also included in this are uh, projects for the youth and the women. And with a notable early payment rate, as seen through the number of coming loans, of only 2.2%, 
which had only been up after COVID-19, it was lower than this, it was about just under one. Compared to what you see in, in the commercial banks of about 5% across the sector, we see that the high reflux imply that for every shilling that government uh, capitalization has put into the SEF, it has been able to generate nearly an additional shilling for onward wearable lending. So that shows you the extent of the success of the scheme. There's a strong multiplier impact of the government contribution to agricultural development through this facility. So working with the participating financial institution, the agricultural credit facility has devised a path-breaking innovation of block allocation. Through block allocation, loans of up to 20 million shillings are extended to farmers based on alternative collateral such as chattel mortgages, cash flow and based financing, and character-based loans among others. This innovation is unlocking access to credit in areas with communal land tenure, and most especially for micro and small older farmers who are otherwise excluded for lack of collateral to secure any credit from the financial institution. By September 2020, the SEF had advanced close to 2.8 billion shillings to 187 small and micro borrowers with non-traditional collateral under block allocation. Block allocation support financial inclusion and ad advanced equity in economic activity by serving women and youth with limited property rights. Now, digitalization offers the means to deliver financial services to the remotest corners of the country that are typically not served by the branch network of financial institutions. But first, it's necessary to extend digital penetration across the country in terms of access to digital services for devices and connectivity to reliable information and communications network. Now, being a central banker, I welcome this year and look forward to the realization of this intended impact with great expectation. The Ugandan economy is still reliant on agriculture, with 69% of the household dependent on subsistence farming and nearly 75% of the households residing in rural areas. And the share of value added by agricultural sector the economy stands at only about 25% currently. Bodily facing this fact, it is clear that whenever Bank of Uganda announces the central bank rate, what we call the CBR, the intended policy signals may not penetrate through to the majority of the population. It's also quite evident that the route for CBR signal to reach the people will be unblocked through agricultural finance. So we think that this digitization is going to bring in financial inclusion and therefore increase the for, you know, the prospects of uh, the signaling to to get these uh, uh, people in the rural areas. So fortunately, by seeking to close the information gap between agriculture and finance, this year books bring the much needed illumination to the recesses of information asymmetry, thereby improving risk analysis and credit scoring of agricultural credits. The year book. The yearbook centric the information available to financial institutions, policy makers, as well as to farmers, investors, and other players in agriculture with great prospects for unlocking agricultural finance. On this note, we are very grateful to Dr. Sarah Selmanyana, who went on a current deal with us here, the executive director of the EPRC, together with our entire team for bringing their professional expertise and technical rigor to this yearbook. This series of yearbooks is essential to broadening financial and economic inclusion, unlocking credit intermediation, and potentially boosting the central bank's policy signals to reach the vast majority of the event market. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now my singular honor and privilege to launch the Agricultural Finance Yearbook 2020. I strongly commend you all to the 10th edition of the Agricultural Yearbook 2020. Thank you very much for your kind